The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. There's a girl, she's a star, she's got style, Steffi Star, you see her face around the town, she's popular, Steffi Star. Hi, I'm Stephanie Weinstein. And I'm Meredith Keach. And we work with Cole Banker. We have a top-notch real estate team of 11 people, and we can help you with everything from, well, well everything real estate. Sales. Yeah, sales. <laughs> yeah. Residential, we're commercial. A little off because we're a little starstruck today. Yeah, we can't even, I don't even know what to say. Oh, my God. I had to wear this special jacket. <laughs> It's Get very stunning, <laughs> may I add. Thank you. Sandy, how about an introduction? Sandy Poirier. Ladies and gentlemen. Sandy Poirier. Boys Sandy and girls. Poirier. Sandy Poirier. Introducing <laughs> the winner of American Beauty. Sandy! <laughs> Oh, and let's not forget Wally. Wally! And Wally. <laughs> Wally. And I'm back. Wally, thank God for Wally. He brings us all, all the uh, major, famous people. major famous people. So Seriously. we're so excited. This is so exciting. Oh this is God. early for me, though. Wait, can we just, <laughs> wait, can we just stare usually, at you for a minute? I, I'm usually getting up around this time. Really? Oh, yeah. This is, this is early. Wow. Yeah, so, You're so cool. So for, for this guy, I... Oh, everyone <laughs> loves Wally. I love Wally. Me too. He's Thanks, the best. Wally. But wait, can we just take it in? Right. We've got piercings. We've got tats. Nail polish. We've got cool nail polish. Mm -hmm. I didn't wear my jewelry because I knew it would jingle and make noise. Oh, we we don't care though. Nah, I try ASMR. Me. Audio guys go crazy. Oh, they, they do. Oh yeah. What well, are you a big so, silver jewelry guy? Yeah. Plus, yeah. You're wearing it in here, and they all they freak out. Oh. Like when I did the show, oh, you can't wear that. Oh. Because yeah. the mic's usually here and it picks it up. Oh, yeah, right. We, we yeah. We I used, used to have that. We had a yeah. TV show and it was problematic with yeah. your hair. Right. The and hair the was always going everywhere. Jack. Right. Well, it's the jewelry. The jewelry, right. Yeah, we changed. You got like two chains, it's only here. And right, right. Can't wear that. And like, oh. <laughs> so, wait, Wally, it's not yes. easy being How a star. How do you know Sandy? How do I know Sandy? I met Sandy. Maybe. When did we meet? Probably, I don't know. What? Uh, I think it was. Either what, bus, nine, what bus line was that in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, maybe we don't want to know. What bus line in the bathroom? Where was that? The Bonanza? In yeah. Downtown yeah. Boston 20 years ago? Boston. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. I you think guys were friends that long? Yeah. Long. Yeah. I think it was 99. Before Sandy was famous? Oh, right. 19. No, I was always famous. Oh, right. <laughs> He was born but famous. In, in famous. famous. He was infamous. infamous. Yeah, I was always well known. Yeah. Wow. And then I started um, buying bikes where I used to work. And then I started racing. And actually, I moved like across the street in Somerville where I used to work. And then oh. when I was bored, I would just like walk over. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, and used to cut everyone's hair after hours in the service department. Yes, no, right. sir. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's awesome. Those were great haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> they were great. <laughs> Wait, you yeah, raced motorcycles high? too? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I, wow. yeah. I miss those days. Those were the... Those, Those are the best days. days I, just, I mean, motorcycle racing is a big adrenaline junkie sport, don't you think? Yeah, it is. But when you crash, it's a big... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a big ambulance ride to the hospital. Ain't no fun. Oh, so, yeah, no. no. Where yeah. did you race them? In Loudoun. Oh, yeah. The track up there, which is yeah. very dangerous, by the way. Oh. Like the the track itself? Yeah, that's, that's one of the more <laughs> technical and... Yeah, the, all the national guys hate that track. They don't even race oh. there anymore. Oh, they, really? they used to have, used to be on the circuit, and they just, I'm not going to race that. They like skipped over. Really? And yeah. it's good for NASCAR because it's just going around in a circle. But not for the bikes. Yeah, well, the bikes have yeah. a 12, 12 turn road course. 
So it's not just going around in a circle. They're up and... Oh. But when you crash, most places have a runoff of a gravel track. These geniuses put tires. <laughs> no, it's a tire wall. That's what you're going you're gonna to run into. Yeah. Oh. And that's why I always would crash into the tire wall. Oh. And, I'd wake, and I'd wake up two hours later. In Concord Hospital. Hospital. Where am I? <laughs> Who am I? When you say you always crash, so is that kind of... Uh, you're all, anyone who races, you're going to crash. It's oh, just okay. a matter of... When? How bad? Yeah, one of, the right. last one was real bad. That's what is that when you quit? No, I kept going, but I lost the killer instinct after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what they in racing. If you got to have it, if you don't have it, don't just, do it. I mean, you can go around and you can, but you can't. You don't. You just always second guess on yourself, and it's just if you don't have that killer instinct. Any, well, any sport, true. You know, football, hockey. Right. Once you lose that, you know what I mean. The brain. Well, now you have a regulator. One, yeah. <laughs> one time my daughter was in gymnastics and she woke up one day and she couldn't do a back handspring anymore. Oh, that was it. Her edge was gone. That was it. She never did it again. <laughs> I'm like, do we need a therapist? I'm like, just do it. She goes, I'm too scared to do anything backwards. And so that well, was the end of gymnastics. There you go. She, she lost her right? killer instinct. Yeah. It's just, when it goes, it goes. You right. Know, you gonna, can't get it back. Nah. I get it. Okay. So now, so you're a famous hairstylist. Mm. How now? I have to tell you. So, my one of my most favorite things to do is watch YouTube videos of hair cutting. I would mm. love to be a hairstylist, mm. but it's never going to happen. <laughs> All right. So, what happened? You just woke up one day and you just. Um. Well, actually, I worked for my father, and he owned a gas station. My father owned a gas station yeah. in Rhode Island. Oh, Massachusetts. Well, that's why I'm planning to start a gearhead anyway. But I just hated it. Cold, dirty all the time. Yeah. And I just, and then um, I was never really good in school. Like I, but I was good with my hands and I was creative. And then a friend of mine is like, "Oh, why don't you go to hairdressing school?" And this was you know oh. years ago. It wasn't. It wasn't like it was mostly girls. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't as cool as it is now. No, it's cooler. It's not cool now. Oh, the whole, <laughs> the whole industry's oh Instagram totally destroyed it. To be honest with you. Oh. It's not. It's it was cooler back then. It was real. Now it's fake. It's all. Oh, it's I all see about, what you're saying. Well, that show that I did, American Beauty stuff, and this is what they didn't show on the show. So I did not want to do the show, and they kept calling me, calling me, calling me, and I wanted to be a judge, and they promised me a lot of stuff. But anyway, I don't want to get into the legal logistics of that. Oh. So what they didn't really say was we got 12 contestants and 75 percent of them had like a million followers on instagram youtube oh, and God. whatever the social media at the yeah. time was and i really didn't i had like five thousand you know what i mean the slot had like twelve thousand um but all these people a million followers and they but they didn't know what they were doing. Because when you're on Instagram, you can do an hour. Everything was like timed. You had to do something a certain amount of time. And all these Instagrammers who probably take 10 hours to film one minute video of themselves doing hair, they're like totally, they were the first ones to leave. This one girl with a million followers, she thought she was a big shot. See you later, first, the first one. And she was like in tears. What am I going to do now? But she couldn't do here. Because it was judged on a whole look. You know what I'm saying? And she could braid. But they didn't get, you know what I'm saying? And even though I hated everyone and they were all like completely rude <laughs> and assholes to me. And I was the only oh. straight guy there too, by the way. Oh. And I think I was definitely, that's what the reason why I was there. Um, the three... Last finalists, okay? It was me, the kid, Andrew, and the other kid, Corey, the black kid who just couldn't stand me. He, him, Andrew, and me, we had the least amount of following on Instagram. Mm. But we worked in the salon every day. That was, you know what I'm saying? These people didn't. And it showed how, like... They sort of missed it in the show. I think that was more the angle, but they switched it up somehow. It was more like these Instagram influences. Like, and, and I was the outcast 
And these other two kids, they didn't have a lot of big followings either. Either watch the YouTube videos. It's it's stupid because you can edit it. You can you can do it ten times. True. Got it. Yeah, right. yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, right. so this was all got it. Videotape being right. watched. We had two hours to do it. You know what I'm saying? So it was like real, really busy in the salon. And these Instagram, these YouTubers, and uh, you know, these influencers, they were the first ones to go. Because it's not the real world what they were asked to do. But what was the application process like? It was awful. And I didn't want to do it. And I wanted to be a judge. <laughs> so what kept, did you have to do? Did you do an online? They called form? me. Okay. And they kept calling me, and I sent in a, they want me to send in a casting tape, but I've done so many shows, and I've been on many reality shows. They knew who I was. And the other kid, Corey, they know who he was, too. But he was like, any reality show he was on, he was like the asshole. Mm. Can I say that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, was, he was like the asshole. <laughs> you can say so, whatever you want, brother. Okay. He was like the <laughs> asshole. So, Ugh, they, they can't, yeah, but listen, the whole thing is. Fake. It's it curious. is so fake. It is so set up. It is so, for example, all the producers who worked on the show, they do like a circuit. Like they work at RuPaul's Drag Race, they'll work Survivor, they'll work um, any other reality. They do a circuit. They leave one show to the other. And it's all the same and it's scripted and it's like the Stockholm Syndrome. So they told you what to say? No, they don't tell you, but they force you. Oh. One, they get you up at five in the morning. Oh. Okay. You work till 1130 at night. Oh, okay. That's a long day. And then you're supposed to respond to an email at two in the morning. So you're up to two in the morning because you got to respond to say what time you're going to be there, which is going to be five thirty in the morning anyway. So they uh -huh. deprive you of sleep. They don't feed you. You're the last to eat. There's no air condition. <gasps> Well, that's because of... That's the, sick. Yeah, but that's because That's of, where I draw the line. You can't have air conditioning here either, because if it blows, you're going right. to hear. Right. It's for audio. Any Anyone knows anything. You can't have air conditioning. Oh, but it just I happened to be there was 125 degrees. Oh. It was like a record. That was Where that, was the taping? It was... After that, was really cool. It was... In, well, it wasn't really cool, but all these studios, they were in like Burbank, in these huge... Did they pay for your travel and everything? Yeah, they paid. For, yeah, they put me up in a hotel, but I was there for six weeks. Oh. They pay for your flight. They put you up. See, this is how they get you. You can order room service, but by the time you're in the hotel, it was like a Hilton. The room service starts at nine o'clock, oh. so you can't get food then. So you gotta get up at like four thirty in the morning and get the the stupid buffet breakfast. So anyway, now you're up at five thirty. And you start your day, and they do the, the mic checks, and they wire you up, and you go through your whole thing, and you're not eating, you're hungry. Oh. And then when you're not, when you're not with, luckily I didn't have to live with them to have my own hotel room, and I think that's pretty much what everyone notes. I think they would have said the same thing. They don't want to, because when you're living, then it's more like. You know what I mean? It's a different, like Big Brother. Like The Bachelor. Yeah, yeah living, right. yeah, living, plus it's more expensive, too. Love is blind. Right. Yeah, yeah naked in a, what's that one? Naked, naked in naked a naked No, naked detraction. A naked detraction? You never seen this? What? No. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on HBO <laughs> are you, Max. Are you going they, on that? No, because they don't show your face. They show, show you naked. And you gotta pick who you want. You haven't heard about that? Oh wait, the British one. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> no, they they just show you die. junk. They, they just show you junk. Men and, and women. Yeah, and they don't even show your face. <laughs> it is well, they show your face in after end, after you're not picked. Yeah, but you have to come yeah. up fully naked. Yeah, and the guys are like, oh, and I would have picked it. Yeah. <laughs> but they're like, I don't really like her. She I, someone told me about it. And I watched it once, and I'm like, I don't know. I want We're going to have to talk about this. I don't want, I don't want okay. to see. 10, I want to keep hearing 10. the application okay. process. From so, what you, so they kept calling me. We want you to do this. And they promised me the world. Oh. And, and they promised me they were going to get me a PR agent. I'd be on all these late night TV shows if I won. So that was the other thing. Which and, you um, did. Which I did. So, but at the end of the day, I don't want to like talk too much about this. I didn't get what I was promised, 100%. Mm -hmm. Like, I was supposed to do a photo shoot with Adriana Lima. 
never, never, never came into fruition. They said it was going to be $100,000 cash. That was not the case. Oh, really? Right. This but scandalous. Okay, so once again, people who want to be on a reality show, they want to be a big shot and want to tell them the real, the real deal. You have to fill out a 30-page um, NDA. <laughs> mm. And it's, it's got things like, if you get a sexually transmitted disease, you can't sue. If you get in a fight and break your arm, you can't sue. There's, if you get a divorce... Because of the show, you can't sue. But it's just, it probably goes to every reality. Like, it's a right. gen, but it's like 30 pages. Ugh. So I showed it to my lawyer, and he's like, yeah, that's a general, it protects them. It's like a boilerplate. Right. Yeah. Right, but I'm sure if you're on The Bachelor, it's the same form. Yeah, and right. And it probably sounded like from Jersey Shore, when they used to get in fights, that if someone right. gets hurt or, or something happens, they can't shoot. Sue the show. So anyway, so like when I got the show, I could have punched that kid, and I would have been totally fine. It was because that was an issue. I, a kid had threw something at me, and I could have gone and punched him, and it would have been totally fine because I would have been covered. Now that would have been good TV. Yeah, but I would have looked like <laughs> right. I would have looked like the biggest asshole. And he's right. got to protect the hands. Right. No, I would have kicked him. Oh. But I, <laughs> I would look like the, I'm like. What am I doing? And that was like the third or fourth episode and I realized that I'm in trouble here. And actually, that after that episode, I almost quit because I, I rented a car. Because if you get kicked off, you've got to stay there. They lock you in the hotel. This is horrible. I can't say Stockholm Syndrome. I'm telling you, people don't understand. They want to be big shots on a reality show? I tell everyone... Don't do it. So anyway, they lock you. Like the super girl that kicked you off the first episode with a million followers. She had to sit in a hotel room for six weeks. Oh, because she they don't want her. Okay, so Ve- Vegas. No, Vegas bets. Make bets. Oh, really? So someone who's a gambler, if they see her home in a week, that's one less. Right. You know what I'm saying? I get right. it. Vegas, Vegas bet on all these shows. That's amazing. Yeah. And you got to stay there until the end. So I wanted to quit because I just hated it so much. I rented a car and I was going to just like go to Malibu. For, you know what I mean? I was just going to like, I still could, I could have left the room, but I had to be like within an hour of, and the hotel was in Glendale. There's nothing to do in Glendale. And the studio was in Burbank. Actually, they shot Scarface and the Sopranos in the studio. So that was like sort of cool because there was a lot of like, memorabilia from them shooting Scarface. And cool. it, it's massive. What's his name, the actor at Scarface? Al Pacino. Yeah. Yeah. You, you sound like him. Yeah. I just wrote that yeah, down. That's what I get a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? Brooklyn? Nah. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. Did you grow up in Quincy? No. Are you I'm, from New I'm, York? So that's what everyone thinks. I'm from Rhode Island. Oh, I hear the Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah the Rhode but Island it, it, accent it's, is It's between like, Boston Boston and New York. Yeah. So anyway, so oh. what are we talking? I don't so know. So they stick you in the room. Oh, right. They lock you in. And um, so now... Wait, could you have your cell phone? In the room. But they take them in... They take them in... What do you call it? Ba- those bags? Yeah, they lock. You can't have it during the day. And I tell you, this day, I think my room was bugged. Oh. Because there's always a producer on the floor after, to make sure you don't leave after that time. There's a producer this with is you. Horrid. I'm telling you. I don't want to be a star anymore. I'm saying I'm saying, cancel I'm, the show. I'm saying it like it is. Right. There's a producer God in the door, so you can't leave. There's a producer in the morning. They have wow. like three producers just babysitting you. So I think they don't they don't want people like collusion. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they don't want you talking with the other contestants. But they the other contestants ended up talking to each other anyway. Come to find out, they, 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 they don't go meet at the bar. And I don't drink, so I, plus I couldn't stand them anyway. They were just like. You didn't want to hang out with them. I, yeah, I had yeah. no idea. So I, who did you talk to? Nobody. Oh my God, I'd lose my mind. This is I terrible know, for that's six what, weeks. That's what I'm saying, for six weeks. You couldn't talk to But do you think they do that on purpose? Yes. Oh, okay, just to kind they, of. Okay, so anyway, so now. They try to make you crazy. And they don't feed you. You're and hungry, then, you're lonely. And then when you don't, when you're not on camera because the crew's got to take a break. They only can work a certain amount of time. 
because they were the union. Right. And they, they only, they, they eat first. And the judges, Adriana Lima, all, they got their big star trailers eating sushi. So by the time we get our food, it's been sitting out there probably like three hours in 125 degree this is weather. Horrible. It is horrible. So I was eating, I lived on like cookies. They think I'm not going to get sick eating cookies. Right. So now, when then they stick you in a room this size with 10 of the people who you were just fighting with like 10 minutes earlier. And I was in the room like this. Just like aggravated, miserable. But one thing we did agree on though, everyone, when they said, everyone was told it was going to be $100,000 cash. If you win. Yes. Everyone was told that, but it was never in writing. <gasps> wow. And if you look at um, America's Got Talent, talent, what do they say? A million dollar cash prize, right? Right. Read the fine print. It says, after taxes, paid over annuity of 40 years. No, sir. Read it. It's right on, it's right on the... It, you yeah, are it. just ruining everything I ever believed <laughs> in. I want to go home. It's a joke. No, this is so you horrible. leave your work for six weeks. That's what... Yeah, I should never have done it. I, to this day, because the inmates were in the asylum. and I should. It wasn't... But they promised me so much. Right. Yeah. How could you say he no? He thought it was going to be worth it. Do you have like PTSD? Does anybody yeah, want I did. one? Yeah. It, it mess it. And all my friends, I knew a bunch of friends who been on Project Runway. Okay. And some other survivors. I love Project Runway. Okay. It does. They do the same thing. And come they, on. And they come, yeah. You're really ruining my yeah. life. But let me tell you what, what it is. <laughs> I'll tell you. I would do Survivor tomorrow. Okay. I would do. Want one? I would do um, Dancing with the Stars tomorrow. I would do anything tomorrow. But the issue is, when you do a competition, what you are actually doing, you're being judged. It's worse because you It's like you enter in a real estate competition. You're being judged on selling real estate. And if you flop, you know what that's gonna to do to your career? Oh, I see. You see what, you're what I'm saying? saying? Right. Yeah. So yeah, so if I do dances with the stars, who, yeah, who cares? cares? You're not yeah. a dancer. Right. right. If you do do survivor, yeah. you're not a survivalist. You right. Know, so, you know what I mean? Right. But, but when you're being judged in like these singing competitions, they're right. being judged on what they do. Right. So when they get that makes it worse. Right. And that's what really was in the back of my mind. I think that's what like drove me to Hey, I better like get my act together here and shut my mouth and put my head down and you know do what I do. Which I, right. which the other reason was one. I one of the producers was a good guy and um, he talked to me when I was ready to leave. He said, "Listen, stick it out." He goes, "They're mean to you because they're afraid of you. You see them as a threat." Mm -hmm. I was a threat to them because I was good. And when you're good, and if you watch all these stupid shows. <laughs> The hottest girl on Bachelor, everyone hates her. Right. Correct? Yeah. Because they know they're a threat. We know how that feels, right? Okay, Gardner? so but what are, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> People hate us because we're so good. Okay, but that's, you know, the, the wind blows highest at the top of the mountain. Yeah. So that's what they premise all these shows on. And I can watch a reality show now, and I can tell, so if I'm with someone, I'm going to say exactly what's going to happen next, exactly what they're going to say. Because all these judges... They all have ear pieces in their ear that you can't see. And there's a big, huge room with like 20 monitors. Because there was probably like 100 cameras in this. And there's producers watching each monitor. And they're telling them what, you know, Adrian Lima, all the... They're telling them what to say. They're forcing the situation. Right. They're not just... Someone's not just... Like, you go... And say something to someone, but she didn't come up with that. The producers go tell, go tell her her hair sucks or something. Tell them she doesn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's even when they judge you, or they all have little oh. pieces. So it's a producer in this big, huge room with twenty monitors. Because, like I said, the studio was massive. They're controlling everything. So it's anything but reality. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. And anyone who says wants to be on a reality show, I'm like, good luck. And I will say, get the prize in writing. Right. That because sounds miserable. Yeah. Miserable is not the word. But it's hot in here now, right? Let's not forget you, you, you kicked everyone's ass though. Yeah. I did. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
But that's he, what I'm saying. He but put his head he in lived the game. In one. He's like, because right. I had my reputation like right. at stake. I, I know some people who've been on them, and I don't want to say any names, but they've lost. Who? I I can't. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> but anyway, they. It's been, it doesn't hurt to ask. It's been sort of shows. <laughs> it's what they do. You know what I mean? And when you lose, I mean that's like heavy duty. You know what I'm saying? That sucks. But if you're a bachelor, right? If you're on the bat, if you're on the bachelor, I mean that's different. It's still different. You're just trying to right, get laid. Right? Who cares? Right. 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 It's no. <laughs> but if you notice, that's why they always the good-looking girls. Everyone torches them, and everyone hates them because they're a threat. So the the other uh, contestants that were on your show are. Are you, are you aware of what they're doing now? Are they yeah, all they're doing still? nothing. Yeah. Uh, are they still? I, I haven't. I don't. He doesn't follow. keep in touch with them. He doesn't like them. The, once I left the show. I like, well, I'm curious if people then leave the industry after they get off a show like that. Once again, I. He kept in touch with no one. Actually, the one kid, the kid who came in second, he's just doing. He's, he was a makeup artist in here. He's just doing makeup. Is that Corey? Then, no, that's. He could die tomorrow. I oh. could care less. He was, he was <laughs> the worst. <laughs> And he has a wig too. He was the jerk. Right? He has a wig. Yeah. Oh. A lot. All the ninety. Oh my God! It's the other issue. What? This They're is so all, And then when you're not doing nothing, the girls are talking about butt lifts and what plastic. Cause a lot of the girls are from California. Oh. And they were like the makeup artists, and they're talking about like butt lifts and all this other. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and the guys, a lot of the guys, they had these wigs that they glue. The whole thing was just. Really? The guys were wigs? Yeah, the kid who had to fight with was a wig. I mean, I found a wig place recently, and I found it very fun. Oh, no, they glue them on now. You looked adorable. They glue them on. They glue uh, the wigs on now. Yeah. The guys, well, yeah, they glue. Oh, I can't believe... Wally? I'm not getting a wig. You should get a wig. Well, I'm going to tell you. Can we I'll try be, one on Wally? I'll be no. honest with you. Yeah. I didn't really notice, because they're so good. Yeah. I didn't know until... They started like growing out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. Like the kids look at he had a hat on his head. Oh. But you didn't know, but out there, if you go with it's cause it's LA, they have good people who a lot of actors, they have the They glue them I mean? onto the scalp, you said? Yeah. And they're probably real hair. It's real hair. They're yeah, where I went the other day, it was like a, you could tell it was like a No, oh that's the other thing. So anyway, that's what saved me. I found the wigs, right? And that's why I started cutting the wigs. So I did realize that they had a box of wigs hid. And luckily I found that because that saved my ass. So there's the real hair wigs and the fake wigs. And I realized that when I went to put a curling eye into the fake wig, oh. it just burned. Right. It was like polyester. So I'm like, shit, what do I do? So anyway, I cut it off. So then I went and I took all the real wigs and I stuck them in my bag. Oh, brilliant. He's yeah. So smart. But that's how you had to be. Right. I mean, I took all the good wigs and I hid them. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, but they, and then people were fighting over clothes. It was just, the whole thing was just, it made, it wasn't a very good, good experience. It I mean, wasn't. I have PTSD from this conversation. I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you like it but is. But you know what? It's so fascinating it because is. who knew? I had no idea that this is what it was like. Anything. It was awful. You're trapped in your hotel room. Yeah. You're basically a bodyguard. Yeah. You can't it's have your cell phone. Okay. You don't eat. You don't sleep. And they do it purposely. Right. It's the stock. You see those people on Survivor. Are they eating? Right. Right. And why do you think they're, they're yelling at each other? Right. Right. Everyone's hangry. You don't sleep. You're tired. Right. I mean, Bugs. Even though we had a hotel room, you couldn't go to sleep the two, and you're up at five thirty. What's that? Three and a half hours of sleep? No right. AC. Well, you can't because of the sound. Okay, so and I don't think they, I don't think they realized that because it was their first reality show. Because they've done a lot of reality shows in salons that I've worked at. Yeah, and you got to shut the. Or if I do a video in the salon, I got to shut the AC because right. you can. It's It'll interferes. Hold. If they, that AC turns on now, you'd hear it. Adam? Yeah. 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 Like when the helicopter's up above. We yeah. Hear. yeah, but once again, it's going to, you know, it, it, they, they got to shut the AC off. But it just happened to be the week that it was 125 degrees. It was a record. And that's why all the models were sitting in robes. And then the girls trying to do the makeup and it's just dripping. And you're doing hair. You can't put right hair in 125 degrees. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. 
So what happened to your career? You win, then what happens? What do they hold on to after you win? Do you have obligations for events? They, I was supposed to, but once again, I don't really want to go too deep. But like I said, I was promised a lot. And I didn't get it. Yeah. And then the, I was supposed to get $50,000 cash. And then the producer calls me and says, well, you're going to have to give 10000 of that to your partner. What partner? The girl who did the makeup. Oh. Because they had, if you were a hairdresser, you had a makeup artist. Or if you were a makeup artist, you had a hairdresser. But I didn't really have to give it to her if I didn't want to. But he called me up and said, well, it would be a good thing if you give her $10,000. So there, I went from $50,000 cash down to $40,000. That you got to pay taxes on. Which really, it was okay because if I pay it on forty, it's less than, better than 50. Yeah. But... I didn't see that money for six months. Wow. That's what I'm saying. The prizes, the, I, didn't, I didn't come home and they weren't waiting at my door. So these other shows, if people say they get this, who knows? You know, we did get $350 a week, though, for a stipend. <laughs> $350 a week. In California. But we could, like I said, we could. They did give us breakfast if you got up early enough. And we would have room service, but by the time we got back, the room service was closed. So you couldn't get anything. Did you lose weight? No, I was always pretty thin anyway, so I'm not a big eater. Oh. But it's just, I'm, I'm like, but some of the people were really, they weren't, especially the girls, they weren't, they were, I think they were more miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were more miserable. <laughs> I would have been a house on I mean, fire. Right. But so, I always wear bandanas or a hat. Okay. And Why? So it's just style? My look, yeah. So I always wear, that's my thing with sunglasses. So anyway, by the end of the of the show, if you notice, everyone's wearing bandanas. Everyone but, copied you. No, because a sweat would go in your eyes oh. and it would burn. <laughs> oh. It keeps the sweat out of your eyes. I always like, everyone's wearing bandanas. Or some sort of like. Do you watch the reruns? Um, oh my god! So, I guess it's on Amazon Prime now. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I'll look at it, but it's just a I don't know. It just brings up bad bad memories. I mean, luckily, I look good. Thank God. And I no no, but I get people today watch it saying, "Why did everyone bully you? Why do they hate you? You were the best one on there." And then, but when it came out, I was getting all these tweets. Why is everyone picking on you? Why is everyone so mean to you? And I had the same reason. I have no idea. But the kid Andrew came in second. He did message me and said, you know, I'm sorry, like, how everyone treated you. Watching it back, I didn't realize how bad it was. So he was, like, sort of. Well, that was nice. Yeah, but the other ones. He they, recognized yeah, it. Yeah, the other ones they could what I have no and do you think they acted that way just because that's their personality were they doing it because they wanted to win the show so they felt crapping on you but see, I don't want to do it because I hate hairdressers mm. you know what I'm saying they're nye, 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 nye. you know what I'm saying and they pick good ones you know some hairdressers are cool but they're a lot of them snippy drama filled egotistical babies and that's what they picked oh and they picked me because I was some straight kid from Boston Cool. But all the judges loved me. That was the other thing, which pissed them off. So I would do nothing, and the judges would rave about what I did, and then they'd get more pissed off. Right. They hate hated, 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 hated. And then when I won, it was oh, just... Oh, forget it. It was all The over. kid Corey ran... This is what I'm also upset about. He ran into the green room and started crying. And they went in and filmed him, and they should have shown that. That's what they should have showed. Weeping like a baby. But of course, I didn't show that. Well, now we all know. Yeah. But it's... anyway, so anyone I say who wants to do a reality show? I'm out. Unless, you know, and get it in writing. I applied for Survivor, but I didn't get picked. You did? The very first one. I could see you on that. I'm glad I didn't get picked. This is uh, yeah, horrible. that would be fine because that you're not. It's not what you do for a living, right? But they have a selling sunset. 
they have a competition like that. Yeah. And, and you go to show a million dollar house and and you screw up and the people don't buy it, you're going to look like an idiot. Your career is dead, Keach. Dead. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Who's going to go to you? Nobody. <laughs> Who's going to go to you if they see you on TV and they're going to edit it? You may do a great job and make one mistake and they're only going to show that one mistake. Right. Of you showing up late and the client sitting out there for a half hour waiting. Pissed. Right, right. It's good and they TV. Can, and they can very easily do that. They can tell you, okay, be in the house at 12 o'clock. And they tell the other people, be there at 10. So now the other people are there at 10 for two hours. Pissed. Right. Oh, my God. Pissed. They can control <laughs> everything. Right. The they control the, the narrative. They're puppet masters. Oh, right. God. They control. And it's, and I tell you, and it's every show is the same. It's the same thing. crap. It's the same. You know, because it's the same producers who work on all these shows. Right. They do, it's called a circuit. Right. They all come from one, they'll do Survivor, then they'll do RuPaul's Drag Queen, then they'll do, I don't know, the cooking shows. They're all, you know what I'm saying? They're, but like I said, I think it's worse if you got to live with them. Right. But yeah, that can only, I can see those going. Oh, like in Big Brother? Yeah, I can see those going like south in real fast. Bachelor in Paradise? Yeah, I can see that. Sleeping in the same, you know, I mean, uh, oh, I can yeah. see that going that even like south faster. I think there's more drama, no shows for that reason. Do you yeah. see yourself doing more TV though? Not obviously, but competition type. TV is really, it's when you have people showing their junk on a dating app, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> a dating show. Yeah. TV, they want drama. They want, you know what I mean? Big 90 clicks. Day Fiance. It was like watching. You know, catfish. Train they want, wreck. They want to watch a train wreck. Yeah. Right. They want to watch a train wreck. And that's where it's going because the, the mentality of people watching these shows are just, they want to see, they want to see a train so wreck. So do you watch any re reality shows? Well, the problem is I watch some because there's a lot of the good shows because everything's been on strike. You know oh, what I'm saying? Because yeah. of the right. I try to stay away from the competition shows though. Yeah. Like I've never watched The Bachelor. I try to stay away from Anything competition like 90 Day Fiance, I like that because it's just because it's a train you know, wreck. I love yeah, it. Like, where do they find these people from? I mean, <laughs> it's, how do they? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and everything's all a lot of TV's all woke now, you know what I'm saying? And it's, I think it shifted too much towards that. And it's just the whole, the whole industry is just plus they're on strike, the writers are on strike, the actors. I think it's. It's a very, I wouldn't want to be, you know, in that industry. Because especially, like, actors don't care if they don't make a movie for a year. But the people who do the makeup, the hairdressers, the sound guy, you know what I mean? Right. They pretty much like paycheck to paycheck. And they're not working either. So, but anyway, the whole industry, I'm... But I'm your business even... was booming before the show? Yeah, yeah it was booming, booming after. Out. But then all, all people want to come in, they come from all over... And they, they get a haircut. You're never going to see them again because they want to take a picture with you. So I'm, I'm just like, okay, come in. $150, I'll take a picture. Bye. That's all they want. That's all you get. You don't get, you know what I'm saying? Can I ask you a professional question? Depends. How does, <laughs> how's my hairstyle? Beautiful. <laughs> Should I come Fabulous. see you? Do I need, do I need work? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It yeah. looks good. Really? Yeah, it's good. What about Meredith's hair? It's fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> I got halfway through blow drying it. Right. Yeah. What if somebody like Wally came in and... <laughs> <laughs> like I say, grass... Just a little glue and we could... Grass don't grow on a busy street. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Wally. You yeah. are out of luck. Yeah, I'm okay with that, though. But so you, know, you know what guys want now? What? Wait, do you do mostly women or guys? Actually, I probably, lately I've been doing a lot more guys. Really? Yeah, so I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because I'm all I do is cut. And a lot of guys grew their hair during COVID. Oh. And it's long. And barbers have no clue how to cut long hair. So, like, most of my guys' clients, they have long hair and they're growing it. Like, they want, like, the rock and roll shag or something. So, I've been getting a lot of those. Which I like doing guys, by the way. They're easy. Talking about sports. You know what I mean? They're not... Rock and roll shag. Yeah. I'll be speaking to well, my son about this. Yeah. Well, no, this is what I was going to say. Oh. So now, how old is your son? 
25. Well, he's made a little older, but all these kids like high school, they want that long thing in the front. Well, my son want, has that. Oh, okay, so there you go. So a lot of them want it curly. Yes, my son too. He's got all this product to try to make I his straight hair curly. Right, that's what you Should he get a perm? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Perms are coming back. Brooke was doing Brooke a perm, yes. yes. Right, but the thing about a perm is they don't last. And then right. what's going to happen is... He's going to have straight hair in the ends, curl in the middle, and straight in the end. Ugh. When it grows out. Listen, the 80s, I did more perms than... I, I had, had a giant lots of perms. Everyone had a perm. I, I loved can, my big hair. I can hair. grab a perm in 10 minutes. But it was just it's just a hard... It's not good for the hair. But all these guys... They, they Is big hair curl. coming back? I mean, it's never left. I love big hair. I mean, it's just... You can get... Wave it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get a wig. It's never left. That's the thing. There's no real trend right now. Every anything goes. Oh. There's no, especially in Boston. It's very vanilla. Yeah, because try going to work in January when you need to be dressed up. It's definitely no, I'm just saying. Like well, it doesn't matter your hair. Well, no one, reason. no one likes. A lot of people don't like edgy hair in Boston. Oh, I'm it's sorry. It's a conservative city. Right. They it, want the, they want the basics, not basics, but they want the they want the just like normal. Like if you go to New York, you go to you see cool haircuts and cool fashion and cool style. If you go to LA, they don't have much style either with their hair because everyone's don't? got like no, it's all like extensions, fake blondes. I know. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Ugh. He is in a, once again here is in a very in this Instagram people post something. And they style it, and they, for one shot, and someone brings in a picture. And I'm like, that ain't going to happen in a million years. Because it's just, it's a fake. <laughs> if my hair doesn't look good, I have the worst day. Right, but if you get a good haircut, and... Well, of, with me, it's all my bangs. If my bangs don't come out right, whole yeah, do is messed up. But that's what I'm saying. I'm good with bangs. I'm good with... But all I do is haircut. So does the person, do they color it or cut your hair? Both? Or they just one or the other? Right. Well, well this person does both. I think you should okay, so there same. you go. That's... A, they're going right. to do an okay job. You can't do both, you're they, saying? No. because You can't be... The people... Good at, you know what? You're right. I know I'm right. I've been doing this for a very long time. Can Meredith and I make appointments at your salon? Absolutely. Commune here, South Boston. <gasps> oh my god, bring, this is so bring, exciting. Bring, how bring a camera, bring a how bring Adam. Video, yeah. Adam, can we do a field trip? Yeah. Yes, I want to get my hair cut. See, but here's Live. the thing. But here's the thing. I don't color. No, I so, know. No, but I'm saying so my colorist will color it, then I cut it. Do you do a dry cut or wet? Yes, I do. Here's <gasps> what I do. I love a dry cut. But this is how I do it. So I'll cut 70% of it, and then I have my assistant shoe. Straighten it and flat iron it, then I do the dry cut. Oh. That's the way to do it. Oh. I just don't blow dry it, then dry cut, but you gotta you gotta wash it, then I do it, puts it then they flat iron it so it's straight. Do you so really have it, to wash your hair twice to get all the product out? Depends how much you put in. Oh. <laughs> Somebody told I, me I, have I to know. wash your hair twice. It depends how much you put in, depends. Do you walk down the street and be like, ugh, she is the worst I used style. to, then I gave up. <laughs> I used to, I used to, then I gave up. I mean, how can you not? Yeah, see, but right? now, it's the other way around. I'm like, that's a cool haircut. Really? She's got good style. Now it's that. Oh. If someone, some civilian walks by, I just, I don't even see him. It's just how do you like? How do you like working in Southie? Listen, Southie is the 02127. It's like the biggest real estate boom. Sure is. Part, and probably in the country right now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've been down there 20 years. And I've seen it go from like honky-tonk bars and criminals to yes. kids paying $3,000 for a two-bedroom that 10 years ago was $500. Yes. Yes. Probably even more than that now. Wicked crime there no, two that's... years ago. Yeah, but they were just... See, but that's the thing. Southie was safe. Wow. They would just fight uh, themselves. Yeah. <laughs> they, no, they would just gang. They would just fight themselves. Oh. Yeah. It's like the North End. Like it's if it, a girls feel safe in the South, I don't think they feel safe in the North End. 
Because the, the punky kids yeah, I guess are right. watching them. I yeah. lived there like early, yeah. oh. late 90s, early yeah. 2000s. Yeah. And it was... Um, Where? Southie. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's My daughter's sick. in Dorchester now. Yeah, because people can't afford Southie. Yeah. And they go oh. to Dorchester. Oh. Or they go to Somerville. It, the whole thing is... People can't afford to live in the city. It's so expensive. Right. And that's the problem. And it's like... The other problem is when they have to pay so much money for... Rent, that's where all their money's going. Yeah. It, the whole system's... Yeah. But Boston is definitely worse than a lot of other... Where are we in? Eastern? Where well, Boston hasn't Eastern? dipped zero, even in the last downturn, 2008. It's going, it's it didn't going, go down. It's going to go, because the interest rates are so high. I don't think that's so. Why that, no, that's why they're making so many... Like the Seaport, 90% of development's apartments. The St. Regis, that the highest condo, there's a lot of... People aren't buying them. They rent because you don't have to come up with a down payment. Right. You don't have to come up with $300,000 for $3 million condo. Right. That's the whole. So what they do, all these like high rise apartments, they'll give you like three months free rent and you only have to pay first month's rent and a security. You don't get no, you have to pay a broker's fee. So that's how they fill them up. And it was like, oh, three months free rent. Yeah, that's great. So then when the $4,000 rent comes in three months later, they're like, oh, what did I do? That's how they get them. Right. Mm. They make it like look good in the beginning, but when the time for the rent comes. See, it's pretty like, swanky though. Yeah, I lived there. I lived there like right before. I lived there while I was doing the show, but it's just, oh. it's changed too much. It's it's It used to be cooler. Now it's, oh. it's. I don't know. They've overbuilt it. It's too... Um, and the other thing is that because it's so close to the airport, they only can build 20 stories high. That's why all the buildings look the same. It looks like a canyon. And they didn't leave any space for like green spaces. It's pretty wild how much that place has changed. Yeah, it, used to it was be, barren it, it wasteland to, yeah, when they, I lived there. They used to be... they. When the snow fields, when they would take the snow yeah. from the streets, they would they would put it down there. And with the cars from the the boats would it was nothing. And now it's like every time I look out my window, I can see like ten cranes. I bet. Yeah. yeah. Huge growth. And then right next to commune, if they're doing the Edison plant, it's the biggest project in Boston right now. What are they doing at Edison? They took it down, you know that, right? No, because I haven't been there forever. Oh I used to have to walk. I took. I'd go to work. I'd walk by the. I'd walk by that bar that was across the All street right. that I wasn't allowed to go into. Murphy's Law. Yeah, the worst. I okay. wasn't allowed to go Sorry. in there, yeah. and I'd walk right by there. I'd walk by Edison. All so they took the whole the Edison plant down. Oh, it's all gone. And what the? It's I think it's something like fifty acres. It's the largest um, project that they're doing in Boston right now. They're putting in office buildings, biotech labs. Yeah, it should be. Ho hotels, condos, apartments, retail, event space. But it's going to take 10 years. I'm always blown away. You it's know, Fall River is the same way. They have these big electrical power plants in the most prime real estate oceanfront. I don't know how, why don't they get them out of there? But I but guess the over problem, time they will. Well, the we problem saw, is oh. they're all EPA. They're all toxic. Green. Oh, <laughs> it takes yeah. time to clean. Well, it that's up. what happened with Fall River. Right? Yeah, but the big I saw towers. those. I saw those two big. What are they called? Yeah, the cooling <gasps> towers. I don't know what they were, but cooling I, towers. I were, turned my head and they were already down. Cooling towers. No, it wasn't that on Fall River? Yeah, yeah, it was. Cooling towers. Yes. You guys, oh. you guys know where you live. Well, who? <laughs> it, where am I? <laughs> are we talking about the same country? <laughs> Yeah, what's they would put on? those. They would put water back into oh, Mount Hope Bay, and it was too hot, and so it was killing all the marine life. So oh. that's why they finally well, got rid of Boston it. Well, Boston Harbor—that's where the sewage used to go. Yes, to before they made Deer oh. Island. Right, the sewage would go right into the. It used to go out right next to the aquarium, the raw sewage. Would you swim in Carson Beach? Um, I'm not a big beach person, but it's cleaned up a lot. I'll be honest with you. Enough for you to swim in it. I wouldn't swim in it. I might go down there and like hang on the wall, get some sun. All right. But I would, wouldn't swim in it. Um, you like to go tanning? No, nah, I used to. I went through a phase, but now I'm just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> T 
Tanning fades the tattoos. That's oh. the other thing. Are you tatted everywhere? Or I got, just your I've arms got a lot, but it definitely, I've noticed over the years that it definitely. Um, fading? They're not fading. They're not as. Exciting. No. I, I lost all the yellow from, yeah. being, from being out in the sun. Yeah, they just. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah they're not as. Vibrant? Yeah. But they do think it's all black. But yeah. you, can, you can get them recolored, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then you're back in the same way you were. Yeah. Um, it's going to you... fade. I think Beckham has all black ones. No, that's Kat Von D. She's going oh. all black. But that's oh. very painful. She's beautiful. Yeah, she did this tattoo. I was on the show, Miami Ink. Stop really? it. Yeah. I used that's to watch a... Miami Ink. Yeah, I was on it. Those are the same no way. roses she had on the her face. I have her liquid Ooh. liner. Now that was an easy show to do because I just sat there and got tattooed. And got tattooed. Right. <laughs> right. That was easy. That was like, oh, okay, this is fun. Right. There was no drama. What I other was, shows have you been on? Split Ends, MTV Made, Super oh. Animal Planet. See, you love the shows. A bunch I of feel time. like you're going to go again. I think so too. It's different now, I'm telling Come you. Come on. You just don't like change. It's a, it's a different um dynamic and it's a different I'm trying to think of a word it's a different um it's a different landscape hmm. everything's like like I said everything is too over the you know what I'm saying it's too over the top they want they want too much well I mean isn't that that's what I hear for from people for social media more and more people want true reality they want unfiltered video posts yeah they be like want. fools yeah and they oh I'm an influencer I was an influencer you make any money right what do you do I'm an influencer you in the stupid bachelor what did she do I'm an influencer you probably work at Starbucks <laughs> <laughs> I'm an influencer oh wow well. Like my, oh, I'm a model. I'm a, I'm a model. <laughs> I got 300 Instagram fans. Say the money's in OnlyFans. So I mean, that's where the money. I is. follow influencers. They've got to make something. They, it's a lot of work that they're doing in order to get all those. Yeah, but they're clothes. not real. They're not real. You're right. And that's a, what the shows. It, it, that's it's not the real world. Right. And it screws a lot of kids up. Because they oh, give them like body right. dysmorphia. They want to look like, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, yeah. It's not. It's, it's true. Probably one percentage of the world can make, not even half of one percent can make it as an influencer. Right. So where sure. did you get your creativity from? I don't know. I just, just born with it. Born with it. Baby, I'm born it's like, with it. It's like being a good chef or a good, yeah. you know what I mean? I just, it's something, I'm autistic, I'm a photographer. It's just... It's left brain like math. I couldn't solve a math problem. Me neither. If you if you paid me. It's so just, I noticed on your Instagram page you do have a lot of um, artistic photography. So yeah, that's I do you. all that. Julia. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been doing that for a long time. So anything in the salon, the models, I shoot them all. I you know oh. what I mean. But I got to tell you, everything's going to video. So that's what you got to jump on. Everything's doing. Everything's reels. Yeah, that's what Stephanie and I have shoot on Friday. You know. And I got to tell you, oh, if you really yeah. want to push it. But it's very hard to do TikTok. That's the future. Yeah. TikTok, but forget posting a photo. You're wasting your time. I know. Gregory keeps saying, you got to go on TikTok. Yeah, but I'm saying you can do it on Instagram, but it's got to be a Reels. Yeah. I don't post photos right, Adam? anymore. Right. Reels. But Reels are tough because you can't dock videos harder because you can't filter it as much. You can't Photoshop it as much. That's the problem. Reels are real. Reels are my favorite. I like creating reels. Me too. I do them a lot. Yeah, reels are, and they get more views. They're fine. Right. Because they uh, they change the algorithm to compete with TikTok. Right. TikTok's all video. Right. Right. But a you tic- can see something pretty and just video it and add some music and it's kind of neat. Yeah, but you need more. He's not impressed with your reels. I don't, I no one know, is I impressed with my reels. And that's fine, because I don't do it for the world. I do it for me. <laughs> so the other thing is now, remember it used to be followers? Yeah. Forget followers. Right. Oh, now it's threads? No, it's oh. not threads. It's, you want views. Right. You know, because followers. Who cares? Even the guy from Instagram said it. If someone's going to want to look at your stuff, or they're going to message you, they're not going to do it on Instagram. They're going to do it on the DMs. Right. So getting followers... It's you want views. Well, I Forget agree followers. because okay. because if you 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 are curating content, right? So right. 
if you're going to follow someone for something very specific. But right. really, if we go on, ultimately what people go on social media for is just as a brain drain, right? Like, oh, I'm just going and mindless looking and oh, pretty video, right? Then you have to be authentic. Yeah, if, but exactly. You have to be authentic. But the, the idea of these main influencers and these TikTok, you got to stick to one thing. Like, I'm sort of all over the place on mine, but that's just me. But anyone who really wants to do it, you got to do one thing and concentrate. Right. You can't I agree. do a video about real estate and then, we'll then do a video taking your son playing hockey. People, you got to keep, to get them really, like millions and millions, Yeah. you need the same sort of content. Right. I mean, you can do them. You're going to get them. But anyone who's like, take it's Daniel Mac. The people, what kind of, what do you do for a living? Nice car. Every video is the same. Right. And he's got millions, millions, TikTok, millions of followers. But everything's video is the same. Nice kind of car. What do you do for a living? He asked him that question. Right. He goes up to people, Ferraris. But he's also in LA. There's a lot of nice cars. Right. <laughs> right. You know, and in the beginning, people were like, who are you? Get out of here. You know what I'm saying? But now they know him. So they're like happy. Oh my God. Right. And they'll like tell them. Right. But it's, it's a grind. It doesn't happen. It did happen overnight for them. I mean, people think that they're going to post and be an influencer and it's going to happen overnight. Yeah, they may get one lucky viral video, but then they just fade into oblivion. Right. You know, it's a very... I have a, I have a sushi roll named after me. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it. It's actually really good too. And then one time I posted mascara, and they ran out of it in every local store. True story. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm a mini influencer. No, what? In my where, own where'd you, mind. Where did you post it? On Friendster. <laughs> I posted it on. Was this on MySpace? It was on MySpace. <laughs> <and> <laughs> was this on MySpace? <laughs> Basically, what are you trying to say? Just trying to be funny. Be a big frog in a little puddle. I tell you, I tried. I know I had a lot of good. MySpace, I tell you, I'll be honest with you, I knew nothing about computers till I got MySpace and Napster. Napster. But I'm saying it made you I learn how to use a computer. Because MySpace in the beginning, you had to put all the codes in, you had to oh. download them, the music. So anyway, so I know I had a lot of good old pictures on MySpace, but I lost. I don't think I ever had one. Everyone had a MySpace. I don't think I was allowed. All right, so anyway, so oh. I tried getting, because I think Justin Timberlake bought it. Oh. Because he wanted to make it like a music thing. And so I tried, and a bunch of, this was years ago, a bunch of people tried like logging into their old accounts, like to get their old pitches, but they just. They're gone. They just, yeah. It, they, wanted, a, they wanted some gone. password, some password, but I think the email, and the company that I used, I don't even think it was Hotmail, something like that. Yeah, they no AOL dot com. Earthlink. Earthlink. Did you um, post that? Did you dial up that mascara? <laughs> it was it was dial up internet, <laughs> and we it went wild, wild. Yeah. But think about that. Though. And then Dial. wait, wait. So then the woman in Osco, so somebody went in to go get it. And she goes, Where? I don't know. Osco. What's that? The, it's a drugstore. Okay. So the woman in Osco <laughs> says, I don't know. Some TV star mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sold out everywhere. I'll be honest with you. Makeup, you can get just as good stuff. And there's great makeup and some stuff in like drugstores. Yeah. And oh, yeah. You don't have to go. Sure. You, yeah. don't, yeah. you don't have to spend a million dollars. You don't have to. It's all how you use it. Well, now we're out of time. It needs to be uh, new. Can you believe we already went an hour? Is, I'm fascinated. I told you I'm good. I, I love it. I mean, you are <laughs> so good. That's why when they do the show, everyone loved when I talk because I can do it. I can do it one take and I'm done. That's it. One these, take and we're done here. These other kids, they would sit there for hours fucking trying to get like a sentence out. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Me, I'm done. This is amazing. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, this thank was, you. This was so me. insightful. Thank you for coming. Yeah, you are you. so great that you came for yeah. just a little thank Wally and I. Getting me here. And thanks, Wally. And, and we check love out you, Commune here. And oh, yeah. Commune here. What's and your, follow on Instagram. <clears throat> follow. Yep. What's Commune? your handle? What's your um, social handles? 
Sandy Poria official. That's my Instagram and commune here for the salon. So I have two. Awesome. Thank you so much. Jeff, do a picture, would you? Yeah, I'm done. <coughs> Perfect. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks for thanks, um, again. thanks for joining us. Thanks, Andy.